So JE mains 25th January shipped two. I have just got my hands on this paper, and I can say that I'm much happier by looking at this paper than I was when I looked at 24th January shipped one. By the way, if you haven't watched my shift one analysis video for January 24th, then the link is in the description. You can take a look at it right now. You see, this paper at least wants you to think a little bit, and it's living up to the JE standard, even though it is still very easy. It is at least a JE paper, uh, and uh, 24th January shift one was very too low level. Uh, anyway, they normalize the marks based on the shift, so it doesn't make a difference in terms of ranking really. But uh, uh, a few of these questions, I mean, quite a few of these questions are not blind formula substitutions. They do ask you to uh, at least follow a certain procedure. For example, draw the FPD or conserve momentum, conserve energy. Some of these questions require you to conserve momentum in a situation that is not, uh, you know, not, not where you wouldn't necessarily remember that momentum had to be conserved. For example, momentum conservation used in nuclear physics. That is one of the questions. Uh, I'll start with the similarities between uh, 2000, uh, between 24th January shift 1 and 25th January shift 2. Uh, we have uh, a, a question on an object that is placed at a distance uh, equal to the radius of Earth. This is the distance of the object from the surface of the Earth. And now it is taken to a height of twice the radius of the Earth from the surface of the Earth and is asking the change in potential energy. Again, MGH will not do the trick whether you take G effective or not. You are supposed to use the actual default potential energy question. We had a similar situation in the previous video. Apart from that, we have a few questions on modern physics. There is one dimensional analysis question and one nuclear physics question. Same areas are focused again. So I think this is a pattern that we will see throughout the mains uh, series where you will get one question from dimensional analysis definitely. So that is four marks you need to ensure for yourself. Another similarity is that power factor and quality factor. One of these two is going to be asked in every paper it seems. If this trend is going to be followed, which it need not be. But I am seeing a question on power factor or quality factor of an RLC circuit so far in every uh, single paper. The first question in this PDF, which may not be the first in your question paper, is a wire of a certain resistance is drawn, is redrawn to increase its length five times. Now the important thing here is the volume of the wire remains constant. If you have done enough work or if you have enough uh, analytical power, then there is something you will directly see. Uh, but it's not straightforward, it's not just a formula substitution, so I appreciate that these kind of questions are here uh, in the paper for once. Uh, the twelfth question in my paper is an inclined plane question where there is a friction involved. So he's asking the minimum force required to push the block up the incline is twice the minimum force required to slide the block down the incline. And he's asking the value of coefficient of friction between block and incline. You have to draw two FBDs and then write down some equations and then you, you can eliminate unknowns to get the answer. But it is, uh, it is appreciable that at least some question requires you to do some work. Thirteenth question again is the dimensional analysis like we saw in the last paper. Uh, 14th question is on surface tension, another question that requires you to think. A big drop is divided into 1000 identical droplets. The surface energy of the big drop is UI and the total surface energy of the 1000 droplets is UF. That is asking UI by UF. So you just have to, this is a standard question really, but at least there is something to do here that does not involve a direct formula substitution. Question 16 is when a stationary nucleus breaks into two daughter nuclei and the velocities are in the ratio 3 is to 2, find the radius of their nuclear sizes. So first of all, you're supposed to conserve momentum, which will give you the uh, ratio of the velocity, the ratio of the masses of the nuclei given this uh, velocity ratio. And then you're supposed to use the fact that radius is proportional to the cube root of the mass number. And that will give you. So this is an interesting question. It involves conservation of momentum in a chapter that uh, does not necessarily uh, involve that in every question. There is one uh, easy question on the definition of thermodynamic processes. Uh, there is a standard resistor series parallel question which we saw in the previous paper also. Again, this is a pattern that seems to be repeating. So, the pressure from those questions that you are writing. There is an optics formula question directly and induced EMF formula question. And there is a question where a capacitor uh, of a certain capacitance is now modified by sliding a dielectric through the plates, but the dielectric occupies only half the volume between the plates. It's between one plate and half. Uh, the remaining half is still air. So this is a question where you have to take the effective capacitance by considering two capacitors side by side with one plate overlapping. So if you have done this kind of question before, this should be easy for you, but it's fine to include this in mains. Another situation is a standard collisions uh, question. This is like the equivalent of FBD questions in NLM. Uh, so it's not really a formula substitution, but it is a standard procedure of question solving in NLM. Uh, overall, there are quite a few questions that you need to write stuff down and not just substitute in formulas. Uh, one or two questions are good. There is a question on electromagnetism uh, where he's asking you Gauss law, Ampere's law, Faraday's law and uh, the magnetism Gauss law. These four laws in integral form, you have to match the left column is the name, the right column is the law in its integral form. This is like if you have seen the chapter electromagnetism, you should be able to do this. 
but I failed to by looking at this question. So this is the summary of this paper. Uh, quite a few similarities, a uh, few corner chapters that are not usually covered. They are repeating in all the papers. So pressure upon units and dimensions definitely, and on power factor and quality factor of LCR circuits. This is going to probably appear in all future papers. That is my take on this paper and similarities with the previous one.